Number one tells us that we need to use technology. So you're going to open a blank spreadsheet either in Excel or Google or GeoGebra, which is the one I'm going to use. And then we're going to use the fill down to recreate this table of equivalent ratios. And they're asking that we don't type anything in rows three through 10. So we should only be typing in rows one and two. And then we should be filling down to get the rest of this information. So in order to do this, why don't you make sure that you opened a blank spreadsheet. So I'll show you the GeoGebra spreadsheet. So you're going to open GeoGebra here by going to geogebra.org. Then you're going to click on this triangle and circle. Then you're going to click on these three dots. And then you can go down to spreadsheet and it'll open this blank spreadsheet for you. So in order to get started, we would just type in the three into cell A1, and then we need to see the pattern so that we can write a formula. So if we take a look here, we start with three to get to six and then nine and then 12, we can see that we're adding three each time. So that's gonna be what we're gonna use for this formula. And so we can go into here and we could type in, whoops, three in this first one because you need a starting point. Then you're gonna type equals and I'm gonna take the A1 box. So I just clicked on A1 and I'm gonna add three. That's gonna get me six. Now I'll be able to click on this and I'll be able to grab this square in the corner and pull down. That's gonna fill in where it's taking the previous box plus three each time. So if I look at this next column B, we see that we start with seven and then we are adding seven each time to get to the next box. So we can go ahead and write that formula into our spreadsheet. So start with seven, we'll hit equals again, click on B1 and then put plus seven. Then we'll click on that B2 box grab the square in the corner and pull down and it's recreated our entire spreadsheet with only having to type into those first two rows. Number two, a list of numbers is made with a pattern where we start with 11 and subtract four to find the next number. Here's the beginning of the list, 11, seven, three. Explain how you could use the fill down in the spreadsheet to find the 10th number. So we could um, start like what we just did here. Let me make this just a little bit bigger. We could start by um, typing 11 into cell A1. And in A2, we could type equals A1 minus four and then hit enter. Then, then we would highlight cell A2 and we would grab the square in the lower right hand corner to fill down until cell A10. And then cell A10 would tell us the 10th number. Cell A10 would contain the 10th number in the pattern. But you could do it if you want to. It says you don't actually need to do it, but if you wanted to check to make sure that you wrote out your whole process right, you certainly could. Number three gives us a spreadsheet showing the computations for, a different, for different versions of the birthday trick from the lesson. So explain what formulas you would enter into cells B4 through B8 so that cell B8 shows the number representing the day of the month. In this example, um, cell B8 should, should show 704. So if you wanted to open a spreadsheet and try this to make sure that what you're saying is correct, you certainly could. So in um, cell B4, so let me type this out. So B4 here, we would wanna type in equals and it says multiply the month by 50. So we wanna pick the month, which is in cell B2. So we would do B2 and then times 50. And remember, you can get that little asterisk by hitting shift eight. 
but when you're writing it on your paper, you can just draw a little asterisk there. Then in the next cell, so I'm just going to paste this here, we want to add 30. So now we're going to add 30 to what we just did. So now we're going to say equals B4 because that's this, that's this cell right here. So we're going to say equals B4 plus 30. So we add 30 to what we previously got. The next box, we're going to want to multiply by 2. So we're going to take B5, which is the previous cell, and multiply it by 2. Now in this next box, we want to add the day to it. So now we're going to take our previous calculation, which is in B6, and we're going to add um, B2, which is the day. Oh, and do I have this wrong? Um, B1, sorry, up here is B1 because I was the month, which is in B1, and the day was in B2. Sorry about that. So then we'll do B6 plus B2, and then in this final one, we would subtract 60. So now we're going to take our previous cell, which is B7, and we're going to subtract 60 from it. And again, you know, like I had this mistake here that I caught during the process, but if we were to type this into a spreadsheet, then we could check. And if we didn't come up with 704, we would have realized that we had a mistake had I not caught that. Number four, write a formula you could type into a spreadsheet to, comp um, to compute each value for the expression. So for this first one, again, we would start with hitting equals. And so we would have equals. And then for the fraction, you would do 2 divided by 5. And then so 2 fifths of 35 means we need to multiply. So 2 divided by 5 times 35. No need for any parentheses here because order of operations will have us doing the 2 divided by 5 first and then multiplying by 35. So we'll be fine. In this next one, we want to take 25. So we'll type in equals and then 25, and we want to divide that by the fraction 5 thirds. So this time we're going to need parentheses in here so that we divide 25 by this entire fraction. Otherwise, it's going to take 25 divided by 5 first if we don't put the parentheses in there. So make sure that you have parentheses. So 25 divided by parentheses around your fraction 5 thirds. Part C wants us to do 1 11th to the fourth power. So we'll type in parentheses just like they have so that we get that whole fraction to the fourth power. So this um, up arrow key is how you do an exponent in the computer. And that's by hitting shift six if you were actually typing it in. Um, part D asks us to do the average of these three numbers. And so the average requires that we add the numbers together first. So we're going to put a parenthesis, 0 plus 3 plus 17, close the parenthesis so that we get the addition first. Then we're going to divide by the number of numbers that were there, which is 3. So we'll get 0 plus 17 in parentheses, then divided by 3. Number five, the data set represents the number of ca cars in town given a speeding ticket each day for 10 days. What is the median and interpret this the value in this situation? Okay, so we'll cut the data in half, which is gonna be right here. So five before that and five after that. These two numbers are both seven. So our median in this case is going to be seven. And what it means is that, um, Half of the days gave seven or fewer speeding tickets, and half the days gave more. Right in the middle of the data, 50% of the days had more or less than seven. Um, and then what is the IQR? So now we need to find the middle of each half of the data. So this bottom half, the middle is five. So we see two numbers on either side. This top half is eight, and then we would subtract those. So eight minus five gives us 
three for that inner quartile range. Number six, the data set represents the most recent sale price in thousands of dollars of 10 homes on a street. What is the mean? So the mean, you're going to add up all of these numbers. So add them all together and you'll get a total of 1,001. Then you divide by how many values there were in the data set, which is 10. So 1,001 divided by 10 is 100.1. And then it also wants us to, um, did it want us to say what it represents? No. So the mean is just 100.1, which if you wanted to think about this in thousands of dollars, that's really $100,100. So if you wanted to kind of think of it in more of actual value. And then the MAD is the mean absolute distribution so or deviation. So we want to come up with how far is each data point from the mean, and this is going to be a positive number. So it's actually you subtract them and do the absolute value. So if we do 100.1 minus 85, that's 15.1 away. I like to just write them here. 91 is 9.1 away. 93 is 7.1 away. 99 is 1.1 away. So all of these are 1.1 away. Um, 102 is 1.9 away. 108 is 7.9 away from the mean. 110 is 9.9 away. And 115 is 14.9 away. So that's the first step in finding the mean, mean absolute deviation. Then you add up all these blue numbers. So you get the total of those and that is 69.2, and then you find the average. So we had 10 data points again, so we would take those deviations, divide it by 10, and we would get 6.92, which in this case in thousands of dollars would be $6,920 is that mean average deviation.